the experience, the education, the knowledge that we've had in the past. This is why most of the great breakthroughs in science and technology today are coming from small corporations, individuals working in private research laboratories. Very few of the major breakthroughs come from the big companies. The big companies will take the major breakthroughs and develop them and commercialize them, but almost invariably, these major breakthroughs are coming from people sometimes who have not even been in the field before, but they get ideas and insights into doing things in a new or different way that are completely unique and original and that lead to the opening up of entire new industries. It reminds me of a story of a small boy who came to the scene of an accident. The police had cordoned off the road and a bridge where a truck driving at 40 or 50 miles an hour had tried to drive under the bridge and become stuck underneath the bridge. And the traffic was cordoned off and there were several tow trucks trying to pull the truck out from under the bridge. And the little boy came to the edge of the crowd and he asked the policeman, he said, what's going on? And the policeman said, well, the truck is stuck under the bridge. He said, what are they doing? He said, they're trying to pull it out. And they just weren't able to pull it out. The truck was too solidly jammed under the bridge. So the little boy looked past the policeman and looked up at him and said, why don't they let the air out of the tires? And the policeman looked down at him, and he looked back at all those grown men trying to pull this truck out from under the bridge, and he shook his head and went back down the hill. And that's exactly what they did. They let the air out of the tires, and the truck just backed out as easy as pie. The little boy had the ability to see things from a different perspective, and every single one of us has that capability. The superconscious mind is the source of all creativity, all intuition, all flashes of insight, all hunches. The superconscious mind is the source of inspiration and motivation and the ability to see things in a brand new way. The superconscious mind is the source of new ideas that help us move toward goal attainment. And the superconscious mind is available to each one of us like a power source that we can plug into simply by finding the plug. Another characteristic of the superconscious mind is that it functions on a non-conscious level 24 hours per day. It is always working to resolve the problems that we are mulling over and to move us toward achieving the goals that we have programmed into the subconscious. Another characteristic of the superconscious is that it's capable of goal-oriented motivation. For goal-oriented motivation, it requires clear, specific goals. Now, you can imagine using the superconscious capability. Imagine that you had an enormous computer, the most complex computer, the most sophisticated computer ever built in the universe, and you had an entire team of the most accomplished computer experts that had ever been trained, and they were at your service. And you could go to them with any problem or any goal, and they could put it into the computer, and they could give you the answer, or they could give you the ideas that you would need to achieve the goal. Nonetheless, even with the most sophisticated computer and the most intelligent computer operators, there is nothing that they could do if you could not define the problem for them, or if you could not clearly tell them what it is that you wanted to accomplish. This is why we talked before about how important it is to have a very clear, specific idea of the goals that we want to accomplish. The superconscious mind is invariably triggered by clarity of definition and by decisiveness. The more decisive and clear we are about what we want, what we want to accomplish, what problems we want to resolve, the more rapidly the superconscious capability goes to work to bring the answers into our lives. Another characteristic of the superconscious mind in terms of goal-oriented motivation is that it releases ideas and energy for goal attainment. If ever you've had the experience of working on something that you were really excited about, that you were really emotionally involved in, something that you really wanted, or something that really inspired you, you will remember that at that point, you seem to have a continuous flow of ideas and energy. You seem to be bubbling with energy. Sometimes you could go on only four or five hours sleep a night. Sometimes your mind would just crackle with ideas and you had this feeling of continuous excitement like sometimes you could barely sleep this is an example of superconscious energy it releases free energy from the atmosphere and makes it available to us to enable us to move toward goal attainment and we'll explain that a little bit more as we go along another characteristic of the superconscious is that it responds to clear authoritative commands and the clear authoritative commands we give to our superconscious capability are in the form of positive affirmations. Every time we affirm positively from the conscious mind to the subconscious mind, we trigger the superconscious mind into action. That's why whenever we say, I like myself, I like myself, I feel terrific, I feel terrific, I earn $50,000 a year, I earn $50,000 a year. 
these strong emotionalized affirmations drive down into the subconscious and trigger the superconscious into action. That's why we find that men and women who are continually talking and thinking in an excited, positive way about the goals that they want to accomplish seem to have a continuous stream of energy, enthusiasm, and ideas that move them toward the accomplishment of those goals. Another characteristic of the superconscious mind is that it automatically and continuously solves every problem on the pathway to your goal. No matter how far the goal is, no matter how distant, as long as the goal is clear, the superconscious will give you every single idea and solution that you need in the exact order that you need it. That once you have programmed the goal in and take the first step, you will find that the superconscious will give you the first step to take, it will solve the first problem, and when you implement the solution, it will give you the next step, it will solve the next problem, it will give you the following step, it will solve the following problem, and all you have to do is take it one step at a time, and at every step along the way, as long as the goal is clear, the problem will come to you. Another characteristic of the superconscious is that it operates best in a spirit of faith and acceptance, which means that the harder you don't try, the more rapidly the superconscious brings you the ideas and the solutions that you require to achieve the goals that you've programmed into the subconscious. In all creative work, mental effort defeats itself. Creativity cannot be forced. Creativity invariably favors the relaxed mind. When we talked in mental programming about how important it is to relax, to take a deep breath, to get a clear mental picture of what you want to accomplish, and just absolutely believe with complete confidence that if you can keep that clear mental picture, that it will come to you exactly when you are ready for it. This superconscious capability, the more you believe in it, the more you absolutely trust that you are moving in the direction of your goal and that your goal is moving toward you simultaneously, the more rapidly it seems to work. The harder you try to force it, the less effective it is. In the Bible, again, it says, Whatsoever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye have it, and you will have it. This is one of the most powerful admonitions to self-confidence and to positive thinking, that if you absolutely believe that you already have the goal as achieved, and just confidently expect each step to take care of itself, that's what triggers the superconscious into working. Another capacity is that the superconscious grows in capability as it is used and believed in. The more that we absolutely believe that it is working for us, the more rapidly it works. And you'll find a very interesting thing, that when you begin using this superconscious capability, it's the same as getting a muscle into shape. If you have not done physical exercise for a period of time, it will take a while before you limber up and loosen up and are able to use your muscles in a particular sport. When you have warmed up and when you have gotten yourself into good physical condition, you find that you can play longer, you can engage in the sport for hours without fatigue, that you can do more and more with greater and greater flexibility and adaptability. It's the same way with the superconscious capability. The more you use it, the faster it works and the better it works until it finally gets to the point where you can think of a goal or put a problem into the superconscious and you'll get a response sometimes within minutes sometimes so fast that it will absolutely stagger you. By the way, Dr. Joyce Brothers calls this flow of superconscious creativity just by the words flow. And whenever an individual has been working on a creative project, and many people who have to write proposals or write reports or write term papers, have had the experience of sitting down to work at a term paper or to work on a proposal, and suddenly something clicks in their mind and the words begin to flow, and they begin to flow line after line after line, and page after page, and it seems that you can write the whole proposal from beginning to end, almost without notes, and when you're finished, it's word perfect. Many of the great poems, and the great stories, and the great songs, many of the great creations of human history have been written or constructed word perfect the very first time. And this is all an example of this superconscious capability that's available to all of us. Another capability of the superconscious mind is that it has the ability to take us through the lessons that we need to learn in order to achieve the goal. We know, for instance, that the subconscious mind will take a goal and will go to work to move us toward that goal, very much the way a torpedo, once it is aimed at a particular target and fired, the torpedo will move toward the target, will take sonar blips from the target that feed back to it and will correct its course and no matter where the target goes 
the torpedo will hit the target. 